Good morning, everyone. I'm Giselle Fernandez. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. What steps would you be willing to take to resolve this crisis with the United States? Superstar. I mean, <laughs> the most powerful star in Hollywood. How tough was it for you to get a real sense of who you are, you know, in the midst of everybody else's projections? These are good questions. That I very hard. Where have you been? I took 15 months off. Are you always preaching, honey? <laughs> Are you oh, always give preaching? Me a puppet. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Saturday Today. Welcome, sir. Thanks for joining us Thank this morning. Thank you, Giselle. And if we're talking about human rights abuses on the island, why are we holding Cuba to a different standard? Are you ready for me? Well, I'll try. Okay. Those Bond girls were nothing compared to me. I know. <laughs> you are nearly 70 years old. Oh, right. <laughs> Sitting in tonight, Giselle Fernandez. Good evening, everyone. CBS News correspondent Giselle Fernandez went to Cuba, and tonight she has an extraordinary close-up look at a people under economic sea. Sing. Ah! Sing to me, Tony. Ah! Sing to oh. me. <laughs> Get a life. I mean, come well, on. It's a movie let, premiere. Let me guess. Which side of the debate do you come down to? <laughs> Are you getting a sense of deja vu here? Well, not yet. We are going to percolate this morning, but first we have the news for you. President Clinton has been touring the Midwest, speaking out against Republican-sponsored budget cuts. All right, speaking of jobs, the FBI loses its number two man. How big an embarrassment for the White House after they build it as the cleaner, meaner FBI? I'm fearless, Ooh, but funny. not that fearless. Okay. <laughs> Jim, great to see you. Ooh. <laughs> great. <He's> <laughs> and I'll move over here to Randy just quickly. <laughs> woo, woo, save those whistles, because this man is hot to look at. <laughs> I'm with you. An unbelievable story. The first, this is today. NBC. Obviously, a lot of the locals who have been through this before, Dan, are hoping this hurricane heads that way, out to sea. Which the weather reports will do. Giselle Fernandez, thanks. You practice what you preach. Mm -hmm. Do you also preach what you most need to learn? And I also preach what I most need to learn. I talk about it so much because in order to keep myself on track. That's very insightful. But I always said you were a magical, smart girl. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> That's great. Welcome back, everyone. Eleven years ago this week, Patricio Alwyn replaced Augusto Pinochet as the president of Chile, ending what some consider to be one of the most brutal dictatorships of the 20th century. I recently traveled to Chile, and I spoke with Pinochet's victims, supporters, and with Isabel Allende, the daughter of the man he deposed. Pinochet, a lightning rod for controversy. To some, his very name has become a worldwide symbol of tyranny and oppression. Santiago, Chile, on September 11th, 1973, a day few Chileans are likely to ever forget. Gunfire erupted here in the streets of the capital. Military fighter jets launched missiles directly at the presidential palace behind me. A bloody coup staged by General Augusto Pinochet was underway. What was the last time you saw your father? What's the last conversation you remember having with him? He was anxious for us to leave. He begged us and then almost ordered us to go. He said, it is important to give testimony, to tell the world what really happened. The right says clearly this was necessary to save Chile, to rehabilitate Chile and save it from the grips of communism. What's your response to that? I don't think it was necessary to save Chile from anything. We had a democratic regime. I believe the Pinochet period was the darkest in the history of Chile. Because of his ill health, the question of whether Pinochet will stand trial for crimes against humanity changes day to day. He has diabetes, arthritis, he has a pacemaker, and he's suffered three mild strokes since 1998. Now, according to Chilean law, none of those afflictions should exempt him from being tried. To his opponents, there will be no peace until he is brought to justice. The fabulous Giselle Fernandez! <laughs> Giselle, are you upset that Madonna got to play uh, Evita? No, I'm a lot more upset that Melanie Griffith gets to play with Antonio Banderas. <laughs> It's gone way out of control, out of whack. Because listen, if I go, listen, if I go to the, the, the mechanic to get my brakes checked, okay? Okay. I'm not going to expect a pap smear. I mean, it's just like <laughs> not what I'm wanting. <laughs> this is white water. You didn't yeah. find anything. Believe me. Now you don't I go over the never, file again. Have, you don't go to other things. He's not getting anything. Never, it's ever over. I maintain the president should have I a show, pap smear. I sure would like to see the garage you go to. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 
Bienvenidos and welcome to the hottest show on the coolest network. Tonight featuring the best of Café Olé. Being one of so few is tough because you often get tagged for the taco beat, meaning you're, you're hired to be in Latino roles as opposed to hired for character. Have you found that to be true, stereotype, typecast? For some reason, I seem to die a lot in movies. <laughs> I, I, I did. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Saturday Today on this momentous occasion because Jack and I are actually in the very same studio <laughs> same on studio. the same day. Same next so to nice each other at the same time in, in weeks. Yeah, where have you been? I thought you were going to say good morning. I'm Giselle Fernandez, and there's a guy here next to me. I'm not quite sure who he is. <laughs> not from L.A., not out of town. Yeah, nice to be back. With nice all to you have folks. you back. And on a busy Saturday this morning, Jack, we're going to get the very latest on the Republicans' plan to slash the Medicare budget. As you know, the proposal is to cut $270 billion from that Medicare budget within seven years. The GOP says it gives seniors more care, more choices for less. The Democrats and a lot of seniors say that's not the case, that the seniors will be the big losers this morning. We're going to debate that topic. Also, on Kitchen Corner, are there some foods that bug you? Well, this morning, we've got food that bugs you, literally. I want to see you have some of these. Oh, there's nothing I won't eat. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> All right, here's a news flash for you. Hollywood destroyed by another natural disaster last night. Nope, not an earthquake, not a flood, not a fire. Try a volcano. That's right, a volcano. It was obviously a lot of movie magic, and Access Hollywood was there to see the city erupt. <laughs> As you heard, this is the first of two volcano movies being shot right now. The other is called Dante's Peak. It stars Pierce Brosnan of James Bond fame. Both films are working extra hard to be the lava movie that flows into theaters first. Sometime next spring, they want to explode at the box office. It's the Academy Awards like you've never seen it before. Oh wow, God. congratulations. Heavy. How do you feel? Well, you know what? To be holding Cuba Gooding Jr.'s <laughs> Academy Award, the Oscar, I gotta say, it's a big deal. You tell me how you feel. Uh, like, you feel 20,000 fold. In Havana, CBS News correspondent Giselle Fernandez begins our coverage. Cuba's top military brass says its forces will stay on heightened alert until the refugee crisis is resolved. And if it doesn't end soon, they say, they're prepared to keep any rebellion in the Guantanamo camps from spreading into this side of Cuba. Giselle Fernandez, CBS News, Guantanamo, Cuba. Giselle, we hear talk of repatriation of refugees. What does the Cuban government say about that? Well, last week, Cuban Defense Minister Raul Castro said that any repatriations in the future will have to go through consular channels. No other official statement has been made. Do you have a direct message for President Clinton? No, no. Not right now. Good wish. Good wishes for President Clinton. Yes. Would you the tougher questions he answered in Spanish. How much longer can the Cuban people suffer this way? Harder. I'm Jack Ford along with Giselle Fernandez. A busy weekend here. We've got the 50th anniversary of the UN, a lot of stuff going on in New York, the World Series. World Series, 180 dignitaries yeah. coming into New York, among them Fidel Castro. You know what one of the great parts of this whole event is? The they World have Series. To, they have, no, no, we'll get to that. I know that I had read that you have a beautiful little daughter, Victoria, and that thoughts of her and your wife kept you going. Yeah, that's why I didn't stay in the building. There's so much healing to go through for both of you, I know, and you're, I, I feel your tears. How are you coping? Are you getting help? Is there enough help to help you deal with all of this? The story, Israel under attack. How do you say my name, Giselle? Shmi. Shmi? Gigi. These are the innocent victims, children shattered with glass. Missiles crash into Tel Aviv. This is where the missile reportedly hit. Giselle Fernandez brings home the story. Families face the fear of chemical attack. Giselle Fernandez brings home the story. There was at least one death. Since war know. began, she's the first anchor to go to Israel and bring it home to you. Political unrest forces Haitians to flee to Miami. And the situation for all of these people. Giselle Fernandez goes to Haiti to get the story. The United States fights in Panama. On the streets of Panama. She travels there to get the story. And as war rages in the Persian Gulf, Giselle Fernandez flies to Israel to get the story. Giselle Fernandez goes to the source and gets the story. Fernandez, I'll be back tomorrow night. Until then, have a good night and a safe, happy holiday.